I'm speaking to Suresh Sati, the transaction banking group head for Yes Bank, a small but very aggressive bank in India. Suresh, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Thank um, you. Yes Bank, small, and yet uh, taking an aggressive stance on the transaction banking business. What's the game plan? Uh, Emmanuel, we see transaction banking as being a very core component of our strategy because if you see on the corporate banking side, transaction banking becomes the most critical component for generating liabilities for the organization. And uh, as we earlier spoke today also, liability generation is one of the focus areas of the bank. So cash management becomes a very uh, key component of that. Likewise, trade contributes uh, what we would term as the uh, fee income for the institution, which again is a very critical product. Both these and rather the entire transaction banking specter of products being very much annuity in nature, provide a very stable source of growth and earning for the bank and therefore it is central to our strategy as we build the bank. Um, how long have you been um, responsible for growing the transaction banking business um, and how long has the bank been at this game? When I joined the bank, when we started the bank, so this has been since 2004. I joined the organization as the first person in transaction banking and built the bank from there. And today you have how many people? Today we have almost around 100 people in the transaction banking side, which primarily constitute the product people and the product sales people. So we both have a product responsibility and also the frontline responsibility of selling and implementation of the product solutions. And how much of that infrastructure to deliver the product is internal to the bank? I mean, you're a small bank, so, I mean, relatively small bank. So, you know, how much, um, you know, money should a small bank throw at building a transaction banking infrastructure? See, we have, our firm belief right from the beginning has been also to look at a partner strategy. So when I talk about partner strategy, it's about outsourcing capabilities where expertise lies elsewhere. So we've been uh, very unique in our approach more towards technology and towards our data center building and everything where we work with partners and outsource technology to that extent. The IP has been very much retained inside the bank and this has been very relevant and critical for our direct banking channels. So as you talk about direct banking, we, we consider it as a very core component again of our transaction banking platform and the entire direct banking, which means any channel which is non-branch led in nature, is part of the transaction banking stream. So here we have basically looked at internet uh, banking, both for the corporate and the retail segment. Mobile banking, we have been pioneers in the country, one of the first ones to receive the mobile banking license from the Reserve Bank of India. ATMs, a contact center, all of these form constitute our uh, direct banking channels. And these are the areas where we've very strongly worked with the best in class partners to build a strategy to also leverage of their technology strengths and combine it with banking products to bring the best to the customer. So this uh, best of breed, white label type approach uh, works for Yes Bank? That works very well because again, uh, the idea is to look at partners who bring solutions, who have success behind them. And uh, <clears throat> the good part has been that we never consider these relationships as vendor relationships. And the partnerships that we've created till now Likewise, the partners have seen a lot of resonance in our strategy in the way we are approaching the market and the way we are projecting our projects and products to the customers to deliver a superior customer experience. These partners have again found a lot of value in joining hands with us and showcasing their capabilities in the market. And a lot of times we have been a partner to a company which has looked at us as their India entry strategy partner. Such as? Such as Portwise, when we first started two-factor authentication way back in 2005, it was not even a mandated security protocol anywhere in India. Rather, it was just being introduced by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, and we introduced two-factor authentication uh, basically with regard to our internet banking channels. And today, believe you me, it has stood us in very good stead. It is the consumer confidence in the way we project our internet banking platform. And almost 42% of my customers today engage with the bank through internet banking, which compared to an industry average of around 12% stands very good. Um, your customer profile, um, in terms of uh, the kind of corporates that you serve, um, are they middle market corporates? Are they um, you know, SMEs? Or do you get a, a, a shooting chance at 
some of the, the big names in India? No, we work across the spectrum because uh, it's very much in line with our, uh, if you may, our corporate banking strategy. Today we have segmented the market into, we actually look at 12 segments, which is a lot of segmentation, but it helps us because that makes us more focused and product centric when we want to engage with those segments. So we have the top tier corporates, we look at the middle market and we look at the SME side also. Parallelly, we have then split them into MNCs, we'll split them into local corporates because each one will have a different need, a different requirement because a lot of MNCs look at shared service centers, ability to engage with treasuries worldwide. Similarly, the local corporates are looking at a lot of shared services which are coming through nowadays. So you have a different flavor of product offering for each one of these. And the other side which we focused on a lot right from the beginning is knowledge banking. The bank has identified uh, around 16 segments which are the sunrise uh, sectors of the Indian growth economy. And these are the ones where we build specialized solutions for them. So there again it, it plays a lot because you can create success stories in a certain industry and then go across the industry in providing those solutions. When do you lose a client? Um, you know, or is there such a thing as losing a client in a fast growing uh, economy like India? Meaning that your clients may well have multiple relationships. So the, the, the nature of competition may not be so much losing clients, but it, in order to be a, the, the, the dominant or the, the de facto uh, main bank for the client in that sense. Um, uh, what is the game, what is the, 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 the feel like? Um, what is the most important, um, you know, competitive um, uh, defining, you know, uh, trigger with a client? I think you're right. It's, it's not so much a matter of losing a client. It's actually getting a dominance in a, in a client relationship. When I say dominance, uh, we today define what we term when we really engage with a customer for a transaction banking product, we do define that we require to have his operating account with us. When we say operating account, 25% in a very academic sense of his flows should be moving through our system. So that is what we define as a threshold beyond which we say we are seriously engaged with the customer. So we always want to try and reach that. When we look at the cor uh, corporates in the top tier or we look at the MNCs, naturally they are overbanked. They will have a lot of customers, a lot of banks working with them. And that is where we want to be in a predominant relationship of having their operating accounts with us. Future plans, um, uh, what are some of the initiatives that you're focusing on at the moment? I think some of the key things which are, which are really redefining the landscape, we spoke about in our today's session about uh, infrastructure penetration. Today there are only 75 million internet uh, banking uh, penetration points in the country. We are talking about a country of 1.2 billion people. Uh, what we really see is mobile we see as a channel for the future with a penetration of almost 600 to 700 million at this stage. Uh, again, being one of the pioneer banks in introducing a prepaid stored value account to the customer, we want to look at that as a channel of engagement. It both serves our uh, interest from a financial inclusion perspective, but it also provides us the ability to take our services both in the supply chain of the corporate customers. We are looking at a lot of solutions in that area where still cash becomes a very predominant component to see how we can use mobile banking uh, technology to be able to disintermediate cash. Again, over here, we've partnered with a world-class partner in Nokia. And as I was saying earlier, a lot of partners have made it an India entry strategy. Mm -hmm. Nokia's worldwide launch of uh, financial services was done in partnership with us in India. Mm -hmm. This is the only place where they are currently doing a financial services uh, mm -hmm. pilot as far as they are concerned on a worldwide basis. Mm -hmm. And we have a very strong product, product with them, mm -hmm. which we see as the product of the future. And finally, what are some of your most important goals that you've set for yourself? What are the next milestones that we need to look out for? I think we want to really create a far deeper impact in the transaction banking and direct banking space. Innovation and technology have been our leading points in this specific product area. We have introduced quite a few, but I think critical for us is to keep moving ahead of the pack because technology, as you know, becomes obsolete very quickly. So that, that's really where we are focusing on and will continue to focus on to give the customers a superior experience leveraging of technology and of innovation going forward. So we said thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot.